Hi guys, this time I'm doing something a little bit different, a standalone macro keypad instead of a full keyboard. I recently got sent one of these and I really wanted to show you what it entails. It's part of a successful Kickstarter campaign and it's available in three packages, the board only for £54, the board plus blank keycaps for £61 and the board plus caps and switches for £69. The guy who did this did it completely on his own, so it's quite impressive, I'd say. Now, I have a dedicated macro pad plus an extra numpad myself at home, and they've proven to be extremely useful. I've had them for several years, so this sort of thing is right up my alley, and this is why I wanted to share this thing with you. The designer of these sent me two of them, and I had to play around with it, and these are my findings. So I deliberately haven't assembled one of them yet so that I can show you what the commercial package looks like. Both of these are the full board plus caps plus switches package and it comes with two plastic plates, a PCB, some screws and stuff, a tiny screwdriver, a USB SSD card reader, 15 loose keycaps and 15 Gatron green switches. I'll eventually put this other one to use as well. Assembling it is pretty easy, there's online instructions on how to do it and it took me less than 15 minutes in total. The PCB has hot swap sockets as well so you don't need to solder anything and you can replace switches really easily. This is a very useful application of hot swap sockets by the way. Now, like I said, I've been using standalone pads for several years now and I've learned that I like them to be extremely clicky and tactile. See, you don't really type on pads, you just press one or two buttons occasionally, so typing flow isn't really a consideration. And second, I keep them off to the side here, so they're not in the way, which means that you need to reach for them and use them at a non-standard angle. So you have to rely a bit more on feedback for whether or not it was pressed properly. Plus, it's just more satisfying. Now, these two have different, but both very tactile, clicky Alps clones in them. This one originally had something softer, but I swapped them for some T5 clones because I found I really like the massive tactility on the switches that came with this one. So, essentially, I want them to be clicky and as tactile as possible. So, I took the Gator on green switches that came with the ducky pad by default and threw them away. Now, when you say MX compatible, clicky, ultra tactile switches, and you respond with anything other than box jades or navies, you're <laughs> wrong. So I put a bunch of jades in them and I went to work with that. And I can say I don't regret the decision. These switches are perfect for the job. So it consists of 15 buttons in a 3x5 grid and it's programmable across 10 different profiles which can be spooled through with these plus and minus keys. It actually already comes with 10 pre-programmed profiles for a bunch of things and this is what it looks like and you can specify different colors for each button on the backlighting. So yeah, an actual useful application of RGB. <laughs> Heavens preserve us! Instead of going the lazy way, i.e. just slotting in an Arduino and making it run QMK, the developer made his own configuring tool for it, and, gasp, it doesn't suck. It's very light, just 24 megabytes, and it doesn't require installation, and it's pretty easy and straightforward to use, a lot more straightforward than QMK at least. The software is also fully open source, by the way. It is also possible to write the scripts for these using a simple text editor, so technically you don't even need the software, but there is no on-the-fly macro recording capability. On-the-fly recording is usually a little bit harder to arrange for macro pads anyway, because they don't have the buttons on them that you want to assign to the keys in the first place. The way old macro pads got around this was to provide a keyboard port. So you'd plug the keyboard into the macro pad and then plug the pad into the computer like this. This way the pad could record the inputs from the keyboard while still allowing the keyboard to type normally. It would have been nice if this was a possibility since I think that on the fly recording beats any program mediated way, especially as I'll show you in a minute how it works here, which is rather slow, but the software and text file approaches both work pretty well too, so it's not too bad, it's not there. So to test it out, I programmed three different profiles for use at work and I color coded them so that it's easy to see which is active. One profile is for ordering solvents, one is for ordering consumables, and a third one is for merchant codes. And you can see on the little screen what each button is, which is a very nice touch. Works like a treat, although I might physically label the keycaps as well at some point. 
Now, just to absolve myself here, I am aware that it's incorrect to put units directly after numbers without leaving a space, which is, of course, <laughs> laughable. However, it seems that if you program in a space, the profile simply forgets everything after it, so that's why it's all crammed together. The Kickstarter unlocked one of the stretch goals that made it come with its own card reader USB thing. Now, originally, stupid me, I thought it was supposed to just slot the SSD inside the pad and then it was supposed to show up as a drive on your computer, but it doesn't. But that does mean that every time you want to program it, you need to disconnect the pad, take out the card, find the reader, put the card in, stick it in your computer, assign the drive, program it, disconnect the drive, take out the reader, take out the card, put it in the pad and read reconnect the pad again. And that's why I said it would be a nice extra to be able to do on the fly recording on it. I have to say that it's somewhat expensive for what it is, just a few small plates of plastic, a loose PCB and some switches, and what it does, but macro pads and other macro capable devices tend to be not that cheap to begin with, and it's just a really impressive project overall I think, two thumbs up for sure. Plus, honestly, it's really useful and it can definitely improve your productivity loads. If you spend time behind a desk, I heavily recommend getting a macro pad, and this one is a pretty good option, I say, especially with that small screen here. So yeah, hope you enjoyed this short little intermission video, and see you in another review this weekend.